Yeah, we're at 15 degrees. Let's see what kind of mess this is. We were doing good for a while there. It was holding around 10, which sucks, but that ain't right. And this is exactly what happened to me when I was on call. So I'm hoping that there's going to be a screen on this flare fitting right there. Hopefully it's dirty. Hopefully that's what's going on. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. Okay, so we're at a different grocery store. Here, check out a freezer. Of course, this freezer is one that I had issues with when I was on call a few weeks ago, and there were some things that needed to be done to it yet. Now we're having issues with it not freezing down. Yeah, we're at 15 degrees. Let's see what kind of mess this is. Yeah, they still haven't got that cleaned up. Yeah, if they don't shut the door all the way, Fan, don't come back on. The old one's still over there, I see. Yeah, it's a little slippery. Yeah, that whole body is kind of frosted up there. I do not see a screen to clean on that turkey. They had to make a repair up there. Yeah, it's freezing up again. That's terrific. That one does, may have a screen, but you're gonna have to pull the flare fitting off to do it. Lovely. Well, I was hoping that we could get in there and maybe check and see if it had one of these. You just pop it out, pop it back in, but that one's the kind you have to undo. We're gonna check that. Fans don't look like they're even spinning the same speeds. But these are hot gas defrost. We're gonna go ahead, pump this thing down, maybe put it in defrost first, help warm it up a little bit. We'll check those screens. Okay, and there's the switch. But you gotta be watching that they actually get the door shut. Now, the problem is that one there's not on the network system, which you can see all the new wiring. They remodeled most of the store. Still the old racks, but they updated the electronics. That one doesn't report back to the controller, so it doesn't tell on them if they leave the doors open. So we climb up that, come over here. That's the layout of the store where everything's at. Rack D, rack A, C, A, B, C, D. So these have been updated. So they kind of put all the new control boards up on top. This is the rack that's got issues, which we're at 10% running a 16 pound suction, 241 head, head's a little high. Fifth fan just came on, it's turning back down. So we can go in here and look, which right there is the walk-in freezer. It says it's 15 degrees. Come down here, look at the temperature. We can graph it and see what all it's been doing. Now, it just went through a defrost. Now, this is from the 1st through the 13th, so you got almost two weeks. You can tell we've had some issues starting at 8 o'clock. Something wacko is going on. That's, that's kind of peculiar, especially when we were doing good for a while there. It was holding around 10, which sucks, but that ain't right. Now, what we can do is we can go, yeah, there's only one sensor on that, too. Now, if you want to look at it a little bit numerical way, you can go to log. You can see 16, and now you can page down. You can see that we were running 15-ish, and we got up to 40-something where we did a defrost. And you can kind of see we've been averaging somewhere around the single digits if you're lucky. Now, if you want to know when the defrost is, you go into setup, go over to tab over, and you can go to defrost. It tells you it's hot gas. It's for 15 minutes, which I increased it by one minute. Drip time, eight minutes. Defrost times it. One more over. Four of them. Six, 12, six, 12. We can pump that down back here. Come over to six. We're going to want to make sure we turn off the hot gas. This is the hot gas line here. Comes up, shoots into the suction. Goes through the suction line, comes out and around the TXV. Comes back on the liquid line. Comes back down onto the header here. They use a valve down here to keep the head pressure and the hot gas pressure differentialed. Otherwise, you'd never be able to push it back. So what they do is they keep the hot gas pressure higher than the liquid line temperature, which then allows it to come back and then dive back into the liquid to be able to be used by the other circuits. I actually did a repair here. 
this is my stub that I used to relieve some of the pressure while I was making the repair. I valved it off there and valved each circuit off. There was a, a leak there on that discharge. But yeah, you see all the refrigerant lines, they're all over your head. All come down and across. That's a basic rundown of how it goes. You got reheat and split coils. So this here, which we've got one of them shut off for some reason. That one's shut off also. That must go to reheat. If you follow that down, it goes to here and goes out. That may be going out to an air handler. Yeah, reheat condenser and then the return. So they isolated it. Normal condenser, so that's hotter and I care to leave my hand on. That comes up here to the top. You got a split coil here, you see a solenoid. So in the winter time, to keep head pressure up, you shut down half the coil. You just stop the flow to it. Basically made yourself a little smaller condenser coil. Goes across and goes across and eventually goes up to the roof to the condensers that are on the roof. So that's what we're working on. I'm gonna throw that into a uh, defrost. So we're gonna have to log in. Now you're in, now you can go freezer, enter, manual defrost, which is seven, hit seven. No action, hit your next button. This is a big one I wasn't ever told about. Previous and next, go to the next, emergency defrost. That's gonna let it run. It's pumping down, and then it's gonna whoop, do the flippy flip, and it's gonna run hot gas through that thing. Okay, went in here and made sure all my breakers are still on, none of them are tripped. Face protector, three contactors. I changed this one, you can tell it's my blue writing. Come over here, get your circuits, you can manually shut them down. This is only being used mainly for basic reporting. That's a really old control. So here's some more controls. This is all 480 compressor relay board. These are the relays for the defrost and the uh, refrigerant solenoids. Then these are your input boards. Those are your sensors that are out there. Unfortunately, some of these here are still being used. Those are old relays. Here's your condenser, split condenser, and your uh, four condenser fans. We come back over here, number six. We wanna feel that's hot gas coming down. So we know that's hot. Hot gas is coming through right now. These sort valves here, they meter the refrigerant coming back based off of the valve here, but it also has a solenoid on it that allows it to shut so that you don't get any hot gas coming back into the manifold. If you had that hot gas blasting right into the suction, you're gonna recirculate on yourself, you're gonna wash out oil, you're gonna have all kinds of bad things happen. I've had these fail, unfortunately. Now there's a lot of iron right there, so that part's kinda hot. It's transferring about there, but not so much here. So it's not leaking through. If it's leaking through, you fill it plain as day. Once that's done, like I said, we're gonna warm it up just a touch in there and then we're gonna yank this out. We're gonna pump it down, which this one's not running the lowest suction in the world, but we'll valve off our liquids. We'll let that thing suck down as far as we can. We can try shutting off other circuits to suck it down lower, which will throw it probably into an alarm. But we're only running 18 pounds of pressure. So since this is a dedicated freezer rack, the pressure's only 18. Are you gonna really take it down to zero or negative? Not necessarily. You're going to clean those screens as fast as possible and get them back together. Normally they'll have ladders over here, which kind of makes it nice. Let's get up here and see if we can see what's going on. That's not me, I didn't leave all that out. So you can see it's melting. Um, the hot gas is going to come. We got a DC superheater back here at the back. So you've got hot gas coming through the suction line, going through the coil. And then right there is the reason why this kind of stuff happens. They just leave the door wide open while they slowly bring stuff in and out. Comes through the suction, comes through here, passes the TXV, comes back on a uh, liquid line going back. So in theory, you're gonna condense that hot gas through this theoretically as a condenser right now. And you're using that cold to create liquid. And then goes back to that rack and does its thing. Okay, we're already starting to freeze on the coil again, which is a bad sign. And this is exactly what happened to me when I was on call. So I'm hoping that there's gonna be a screen on this flare fitting right there. Hopefully it's dirty. Hopefully that's what's going on. Okay, so this thing just reversed. 
and you can hear it whistling Dixie. That doesn't seem like 15 minutes. We've got all kinds of repairs. These coils are just plumb need replaced. Listen to that thing. That's not a steady stream, that's metering. So I'm coming up to here. So I'm gonna go down up there right now. Let's see if this other one's doing it. Yep, same thing. Okay, so back into circuits, go down to six. It says drip. Yeah, that's not blasting hot air, hot uh, gas through there. Go ahead and shut it down. There we go, go ahead and do liquid. Shut it down too. They've got little wrenches that'll fit in there. You can tell this thing's been worked on, all the caps are practically loose. And we'll watch this and make sure that it comes down. As you can see here, our suction is really high yet. I haven't closed that valve yet. It should be opening up here shortly. Right now it is not open. You can see there's no magnetic field. With the clamp open, you have no magnetic field. Come up here to the hot gas one, same thing, put it beside it, no magnetic field. Now, if you come up beside one of these other ones, you can see there's a magnetic field there and you're pulling for arbitrary numbers. But it tells you whether you got a magnetic field there or not. It's all after all is, magnetic field. Arbitrary numbers, but you'll have something. If it's dead, it'll be zero. It just opened up, now you come in, look at that. Now we have the arbitrary number. We're pulling down nice and quick. Our liquid level has came up, which is awesome. We're up to 30% right there. Usually we shoot for 10% area to 20%. We leave it low on purpose, just enough to make the system work. If you have a leak, you want it to start bailing out right away. That way you're not wasting a lot of refrigerant. Just say you had an 80% and you have a leak. You aren't gonna know for days until that thing gets low enough, which is a total waste of refrigerant. That's why we don't fill the receivers up full. Still right around about 13 pounds. Let's go ahead and close this suction line. See if that thing jumps up. If it jumps up, we know we got a lot of refrigerant in there yet. It's not jumping up. Now, what you could do is you could use your recovery machine, pump it out of there right into the suction line of one of the units beside it to be able to go in there and check that without losing any refrigerant or violating any EPA laws. That's what we gotta do. The alternative thing we can do here, we can go into the compressors and we can force them to stay on. We can override them. Yes, enter, override time. Gotta go zero minutes. We'll go two minutes, seconds, enter. On, enter. It'll stay on for two minutes. But you go through here now, you start shutting off these other circuits. And we're gonna force that one to run. So now we got two compressors running. We can run this thing down, hopefully down really low. See how it's going down. Now this thing's gonna go into an alarm here in a minute. That's the only one running, then we're gonna slam that thing shut. We're gonna set off the alarm, which ain't really anything most people are gonna hear. Uh, they will up front. Two compressors should be plenty. Yeah, we're down to five pounds. That's a big line though. That big line goes all the way across and way out there. There's five pounds. It's taken a little bit to do it. We got, like I said, all the circuits off except for that one. That's the only one that should be pulling, which we've got that little burger. Feels like the only one that's running. Theoretically, the third one should be running. There's three. They just came back on. Yeah, there we go, we're about ready to hit. So there's zero, whoa, we're way too low. But here's what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead, there went the alarm, we're gonna slam this thing shut, we're gonna pull it back out, we're gonna break that here in a second and let the refrigerant come back up, and then we'll be all right. So we're gonna come back in here, turn on the other circuits. We're gonna go ahead and that alarm, it, all the other ones came back on, suction's gonna come back up, we'll be good. Alarm's just automatically cleared, which is good. Let's go in here and take that override off. Well, the override fell off, perfect, two minutes. Everything's back to normal, suction's coming back up. So we come over here, we're still in a negative, we don't want that, we don't want air into the system. Let's go ahead and open this up a little bit, bring her up to a positive. 
just about a pound or two. There we go. About one pound of pressure. Now we should be able to take that apart and not lose anything, but keep the air out of it at the same time, not have to pull a vacuum or anything like that. Take it apart, put it back together fast, boom. That's how you do it. For the naysayers, you could hear a little bit of a psh when I pulled that apart. That refrigerant will continue to expand even in this cold weather or cold environment that we're in right now. Okay, put that back in. Like that. We'll put a little bit on this. There we go. Wipe, wipe. Boom. Now, am I gonna get my torque wrench out right now? No, could, but man, I guarantee you somebody's already over tightened this probably 16 times. It probably don't really matter at this point. I gotta be careful, guys. I don't wanna break this sucker off. If I break this off, I'm screwed. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and throw that motor away. That's the one with a bad fan blade that I found. Did not record that day because I was getting my rear end handed to me. Same stuff, just a lot bigger and more stuff to go wrong. A lot more money on the line. How much money do you think could be in here if it was completely full? Well, let's get this thing up and going. Oh, we'll put some pressure on it. We'll spray those fittings. So we went ahead and opened up our liquid lines and our hot gas again. We got the suction stop still shut. We're up to 35 pounds. That'll come up even higher as it pushes through the TXV. That's gonna give us pressure on that. We're gonna go ahead and spray it real quick, make sure there's no leaks. Actually, let's go ahead and put it into a defrost. Okay, if we put it back into a defrost again, that's gonna keep it nice and warm. That'll also help us start melting some of that ice off. There it goes. All right, so we just sprayed it. Nothing's leaking on that one. Okay, this is the other one we just sprayed it. Nothing leaking on that one. Nothing leaking on that one down there. We're gonna mark it here. Has screens. Okay, so we've got a good majority of it off the back. The inside's gonna have to be gotten. Same thing with that over there. We're gonna have to come back. I've gotta do that produce case that's leaking water yet. And uh, it's at least an hour drive back. So we can come back and do it then. Right now, as it stands, we're already almost four o'clock. And the hot gas defrost didn't want to do much because it was feeding another case at the same time. But it got some of it loose. All right, so I bet you this is probably the area they're talking about. It's got the thing there. You can see they have a absorbent sock down there, and that's about the end of it. So. Everything's at temperature, 32, 33-ish. 3, so let's see if we can pull one of these up and see if we can get a look underneath here. I can see water right there. Yep, we got water down there. So let's see if we can move some of this out of the way. It's kind of grungy. down there so we need to find the drain it's just plugged up usually it's in the middle so we got to move some of this stuff let's roll it down let's take a look down here see if this has got water in it that there looks fairly dry except for the fact that it's uh, got a little bit of leak over I think so we'll move these down Looks like a drain deal there to help prevent it from crap getting in it. Oh, there's the drain right there. Yep, there it is. All right, let's go grab a air hose. We'll blast out some nitrogen. We're gonna try and see if we can blast this out without putting our hand on it, because I don't really got a backer. Yeah, we're gonna 
we're gonna have to go grab us a rag to put down there on it and give it a little pop. That should've got it. Yeah, it's going down. All this crap that's in here is gonna go right with it and flush it right on down. What happens is it plugs up and that slow moving stuff gets cut in there. This right now it's got some velocity behind it. Somebody would have kept this thing in place right here like this. This would have stopped big chunks from getting in there. But somebody didn't want to deal with it, so they moved it. And then crap got caught. Now hopefully it don't come flying out the front because sometimes the drains that this drains into aren't doing very good. Yum yum. Kind of generic, but you know, a little bag. It worked just fine to have them set in there. I just basically put it together like that and put it over top of it and used it to gap it a little bit. And there it goes. All right, guys, so that's gonna wrap that one up. Uh, the box is already dropping down in temperature. I just checked it a minute ago and it's dropping down fast. It's only set for negative three. Drain obviously drained, and that's all we had here, along with that other one we had earlier. So, um, hope you guys enjoyed the little insight into the grocery life. And until next time, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.